So I think what I'm going to do then is simply tell you that circulation is on the map, and from the laboratory point of view, it means coagulation is on the map, and it means it's a good idea to measure our children, and maybe since these are genetic factors, the parents as well, you may save your own life, because the, the, the downstream from this, actually, there's another slide after that, that I don't, I don't forget this one. Uh, there's a picture slide, which is, you, you'll know in a moment, you don't have to look at it, but I want to read a few things off the thing, and you'll see why homocysteine is also so important. If you can understand that slide, you understand homocysteine pretty well. So obviously, you're all out. But down the left-hand margin, uh, the metabolic side of homocysteine, it's responsible for, me see, homocysteine, when it's high, it means methionine, the essential amino acid, is not working. And one system that goes out is called methylation, the transfer of a single carbon hydrogen from one place to another. And a number of key molecules depend on it, and all the books left it out. So I kind of brought them all together, all that I could think of here. Melatonin goes out, so the kids don't sleep. Epinephrine goes out, so the kids get stuck. They, they can't reinforce the reward system. Carnitine goes out, so they have muscle, loss of muscle tone. Creatine goes out, loss of muscle energy. Uh, phospholipids don't form properly, so they have no reserve for correcting the methylation defect. The phospholipids are ultimately this, the stored reserve of the methyl groups. DAA, DNA and RNA don't form properly, don't methylate, and hence are much more likely to cause cancer. Um, thymidine, uh, for example, the regulator of the immune system, and also regulator, is defunct. Myelin does not form, so the nerve injuries can't heal. The early developmental period, demyelinization occurs, and without this functional system, you're in big trouble. And finally, histamine will not methylate normally. And that gets you right back to secretin, because while well, secretin and gastrin work as a, and this finishes my talk, in a push-pull manner, where the hydrochloric acid is turned on in the stomach, it gets to the duodenum, activates the, uh, Secretin. Secretin is now activating the pancreas. The pancreas lets out a bolus of digestive enzymes and bicarbonate, which neutralizes the acid. Without that balance, you get profound inflammation of the duodenum. All right, so the secretin feeds back and turns off the gastrin. And that's supposed to turn off the acid, right? Wrong because there's still histamine. And the histamine in the stomach turns out to be the backup acidifier. That backup system is still going. And when the acid starts going out of balance, there's nothing to turn off the histamine, which the normal turnoff switch is a methyl group, methyl histamine. So that's the, that's the end of the, the logic behind this. So that homocysteine fits into the pattern of autism syndrome on so many levels, directly and indirectly, not to mention zinc, which is tied up intrinsically in the pancreatic function, and et cetera. So uh, I thank you for lasting, and it was fun.